when the Democrats have been president, it's been uh, analyzed return of 15.7%. And then, you know, when the Republicans have been president with a divided Congress, it's been 12%. So those are the best scenarios. Again, just uh, the market views it as less uh, uncertainty um, because they're pro- these Again, lack of a better word, extreme policies are, are very unlikely to get passed. Welcome to the Wiser Retirement Podcast, where we believe the best financial advice should be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith, guiding you to financial freedom today is my co-host, Andrew Pratt, King of Data. Hello, <laughs> Andrew. Good morning, Casey. So, um... Man, you got you got something big coming up. I just we talked about this in our last podcast with Robert, but um, you uh, you're going to be on the on the big stage here pretty soon. Yeah, in Austin, Texas, Dude. like the the like everybody in America is moving to Austin. Yep, except for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, m- most people listening to this podcast are probably not moving mm-hmm. to Austin. It just seems like um, many are. There's actually a U-Haul tracker uh, that uh, an investor does that tracks where U-Hauls are going across the country and more, and it does it by the rate, right? So there's more U-Hauls going into Austin than anywhere else. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be on stage with a guy in our industry who's um, probably like the, I guess, or the biggest RA in the country, Rick Elderman. And you're going to be talking yeah. about what? We're going to be talking about modern portfolio theory, and digital assets and how to incorporate that, um, you know, into uh, multi-asset portfolios. Um, from what I've been told, he's going to moderate. I guess things could change, um, but it'll be myself and um, a professor at the University of Texas. So I think what they're going for is kind of a back and forth dynamic of a real life practitioner yep. and a academic. And it's not like we're going to be debating, but we submitted various questions and, and I think Rick Edelman's going to moderate and, uh, just kind of, you know, set us up. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm excited for you because I was, I was on that stage at one point, uh, when they were talking about ETFs. Can you imagine <laughs> that? Uh, back in, back in, uh, 2004, uh, five, six, seven, that, that era, uh, we were on some pretty cool situ- uh, stages, situations, CNBC, that kind of stuff that, that, uh, we're talking about, um, do you have any of those recordings? Yeah. So uh, we pro- <laughs> they probably do somewhere. They're probably yeah. out, out there deep. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that, that's really cool. It, it, it's one thing I love about wiser is our ability. You know, I kind of look at us as, as, as we're powerful. Um, but we're like a speedboat where these really, really large firms are, are nice, but they're more like the, the, the huge mega yachts. Right. Right. And it's really hard to turn them. <laughs> it's really hard to switch yeah. direction and, and pivot, uh, because there's honestly, these really big firms now are really, they didn't actually grow to be that big. They acquired other companies. And so you like, you have a bunch of stepchildren, <laughs> right. Yeah. You gotta get everybody on a different, on a different page. Everyone's not really <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, correct. So you have to get everybody on a, yeah. on the same page that, that typically is used to marching to their own beat. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really hard to guide that ship. So really at, at a, at a large RAA, you end up with a bunch of small companies inside, really inside a big company. Right. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm really proud of you and your hard work, uh, in the crypto space. You have a, um, uh, new certification around digital assets as well. We talked about yes. that a while back ago, but, uh, that's exciting. Uh, so thanks for wi- raising the wiser banner. Uh, we're not going to get clients out of that obviously, but, but I think yeah. it's a great feather in a cap and it shows that we're experts and definitely in, in what we're doing, mm-hmm. especially at the, that's probably the best digital asset conference in the world at this point, um, for, for registered investment advisors. It is. There's some big names there for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, let's get into something, um, probably more controversial than uh, Bitcoin right now. <laughs> And let's talk about presidential elections and how do they influence the stock market. So this one coming up, I've been dreading this. I think it's been pretty quiet, honestly, yeah. so far. Now, I don't follow political news because there's no value in it. Zero. It, all it does is get you riled up. And half the stuff you read is, is, is half truths. Right. Right. So I don't want to get riled up. I don't need to get increased my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of avoid all that at this point. Um, but there's 
there's um, the, this undertone amongst, I think, our client base and, and, and just people in general that we don't want to, see, we mean they, they don't want to make any changes to so, something in their life right now because, you know, Biden just really ruined this country or because um, Trump might get elected or right. because, yeah. you know, all these different things. Now, there are a lot of things that a president uh, changes, Right. There are climate policies and, mm -hmm. and, um, tax know, reform, tax and reform. And there's a lot of things, but I'm only talking today. We're only talking today specifically about your portfolio. So when it comes to stocks and bonds, what does it really matter? So, you know, I think really this can just be summarized into one main point and, you just need to stay invested no matter who's in the Oval Office, no matter how, like what the makeup is of Congress, you just need to stay invested. Um, you know, just looking at some data points, going back to, uh, you know, when JFK was in office, 1961, um, you know, the S&P 500 only posted a negative return twice during a president's term. So just, you know, take that into context. The market will... Now, term is every four years. Yes, every four years. So if they were elected twice, that's two terms. Right. So it was down how many times? So, uh, you know, during, um, during two different presidencies, I think yeah. it was um, Nixon and George W. Bush, um, where the market was negative for those periods of time. So, you know, it's, and, and you cannot forecast that. You just need to stay invested and ride the course, no matter who's in the office, no matter what the policies are. Um, I think that's really the main goal. And, and we do have, um, a graphic here, um, that we can point to. Yeah. If you're watching this on, uh, our YouTube channel, a wiser retirement, you can see this, um, this. Yeah. And it might, it might be a little bit hard to see, but you know, you can see at the bottom, the different presidents and their analyzed, uh, or sorry, their cumulative market performance over their, um, president's tenure and, yeah. and, uh, George W. Bush, he was at negative 38, 36%. And uh, Richard, let's see, where's Nixon? Nixon was at 19. negative 19, negative that's, 20%. So that's interesting. Um, we don't think about President Johnson much, but that's up 46%. Right. Uh, obviously, the, the winner is going to be Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> up 209%. That was two terms. Right. Uh, Bush had, Bush had, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Well, this, the first Bush was up 51 second Bush, uh, down 36. That's because of the financial crisis. Yeah. So you could argue that it was the last year of his presidency last six months, really. Yeah. He kind of got a, a bad rap. Uh, it, was very, it was very yeah. positive up to that point. And then Obama got the rebound, Bush right. didn't get the rebound. Yeah, so so Obama, again, Obama's up 181% to the Obama <laughs> administration. Semantics there, uh, but Trump. Trump, even with the uh, COVID crash up 87% because COVID was down 30 yeah. something percent. Yeah. I think that's 67. Again, it might be a little, oh, 67. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's yeah small a little, a little hard here. to see, but, um, yeah. but yeah, again, we don't know when recessions are going to occur. We don't right. know what's going to happen in the business cycle. Again, you know, you just need to stay the core, stay invested. That that's the most important thing. I mean, another thing on this graph too is very obvious is the lost decade. And that's between 2000 and 2010 yeah. where everything was kind of flat because of you had the financial crisis, you had nine 11, you had Enron, you had a lot of nasty stuff yeah. between 2000 and 2010. But other than that, um, and it, honestly, you could argue that if you were buying in those dips during that lost decade, you made right. a fortune. Yeah, definitely. Two it's during recessions. It's, it's easier to, to get out, but it's also harder to, um, to invest back into the market. And I think a lot of people, you know, and, and again, it's two different calls. You have to make two, if you're trying to time the market, you have to also, you know, you have to sell at the right time and also buy back in the right time. And, and that's just really hard to predict. What people always say is I'm going to get out at this level and it, and then I'll buy back in when it comes back <laughs> to that level. Right. And it's almost impossible to make that happen. You have to remember that the market opens and closes at different values. So if it closed at 10,000 and it opened the next day, it could open at 12. Right. 
I mean, we saw that during during all the crises, <laughs> right? But yeah. it, it'll this thing called the futures market, which is constantly trading, and you're not buying into that with your ETFs or or any other mechanism as a normal investor. So, it, you you can't say, okay, I'm going to buy back in at this. And also, too, different asset couples move at different different paces, right? right. So you, you, they're looking at the Dow, but on TV, but you're no more narc firms really invest in the Dow. I don't know anybody invests in the Dow, no. honestly. Not really. It, everyone mm-hmm. usually just invests in, in the S&P yeah. 500, not the Dow. So uh, you're would, looking at yeah. the Dow trying to, to time your in and out of the market, and that's not even what your investment is. Mm-hmm. So then you have to understand the S&P 500 and its metrics. Uh, but then the S&P is moving different than small caps, right. moving different than bonds. So... You know, it, it doesn't work the way that people think that it does um, as far as try to time time yeah, something. Definitely. So what is, um, t- tell me, you have a little research on this, uh, the most prudent investment strategy. So, you know, going back to sort of the timing aspect, you know, if you're trying to time uh, the market around who's in the Oval Office, um, you know, to say whether it's Republican or Democrat. Um, this research looked back, um, going back to 1950, and if, it was, if you just were invested, let's just say Democrat, if you were just invested in the market um, when a Democrat was president, and then just say you were in cash, you moved into cash when a Republican was president, you would have, uh, your annualized return would have been about 5%. Now, if you did that as a Republican, your return, your analyzed return would have been lower at 3%. So, so basically, if you buy, if you invest only in Republican presidents, you're only up three annualized year yes. over year, and you're up five if you invest in Democrats. Yes. And, and then if you just stay invested, uh, agnostic to whoever's in the office and the Oval Office, your uh, market return would have been 8%. So, again, another, <laughs> another point to no. just ignore politics. And, right. And but just, think about, okay, so let's, let's figure out why though, because if Democrats are five and Republicans are two, you think the average of that would be somewhere between five and two, not, <laughs> not higher at eight. Right. So you think that's loss of dividends possibly? Cause that's about what the yield would yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. Probably loss of dividends. So mm. let, you didn't, you didn't collect income because you're sitting mm. in cash somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and this was closer. So Republicans was 2.8 and Democrats was 5.1. So that's closer to that eight. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, again, probably the timing metric too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. Cause yeah. you're sitting out for, you could be sitting out for eight years Yeah. and you would, you would miss the Clinton years, which is skewing that 5%. Yeah. Obviously. Definitely. Okay. So what about Congress? Does the market perform better if only one port party controls Congress? So the short answer is no. <laughs> um, you know, this may sound counterintuitive, but uh, the market likes and, you know, investors, analysts, whatever, they, they like a divided Congress. So, you know, meaning whether it's not just an all Republican or Democrat Congress, they, they like Congress that split because that means it's less likely for any like, and I hate, you know, lack for a better word, extreme policies to get pushed through. Um, and that way, you know, and that, and you know, that rationale, it's less uncertain. There's less uncertainty because of that. So, uh, and in this case, uh, the divided Congress, uh, is, you know, more certain and provides less uncertainty. Are you curious why annuities keep coming up as a potential investment option? People are often told that annuities can effectively mitigate investment risks and help secure their financial future. However, annuities often benefit the salesperson and might not be the best choice for you as a consumer. To learn more about the various types of annuities, the negatives of owning them, and better investment alternatives, we have a free ebook on our website just for you. To download our ebook, Buyer Beware, Why Do They Keep Trying to Sell You That Annuity? Simply click the link in the episode notes or visit wiserinvestor.com slash guides. Now let's get back to the episode. I mean, that 
makes sense, I guess. I mean, that's exactly what you had during mm-hmm. the Clinton years. You had a Republican uh, Congress and you had a Democratic president. Right. And Clinton sounds, I mean, if you look at Clinton's presidency, for the most part, at least economically speaking, he was more Republican now than some Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Much more, uh, uh, more tame uh, economically back then. Um, okay, so what's our rate of return? So, and, and, you know, when I say divided Congress too, this is not just, this is House and uh, Senate. It's not just the entire Congress. Um, so, uh, so in, in these scenarios where the House and the Senate are divided, you know, during the Democrat, when the Democrats have been president, it's been uh, analyzed return of 15.7%. And then, you know, when the Republicans been president with a divided Congress, it's been 12%. So those are the best scenarios. Again, just uh, the market views it as less uh, uncertainty um, because they're pol- these, again, lack of a better word, extreme policies are, are very unlikely to get passed. So let's bring it back to modern day. The, right now we've got Trump versus Biden with maybe a third party candidate. We're waiting to see <laughs> if he gets enough uh, yeah. votes. Um, uh, RFK, right? Yes. Uh, uh, waiting to see if RFK gets enough votes to be able to be on the debate ta- uh, uh, debate stand. And, and that is in order to do that, he's got to be on so many ballots across the country. His people say no problem. <laughs> uh, if he shows up, I think the other two parties would be very surprised. Uh, sorry. So let's, let's look at, uh, Trump versus Biden. And now obviously Biden's term is not over. Right. Uh, but through, we, we can take it through the end of last month, three thirty one twenty four. What's our, right. what's our difference? Yeah. So, um, you know, just again, analyze return during each of these presidents term Biden going back through March of, uh, you know, earlier this year. Trump's uh, analyzed return was 16%, which is might be shocking to hear. And then Biden's um, analyzed re- return during, during these time frames was uh, close to 12%. So again, very solid returns for both different political uh, parties. Yeah, with some a lot of uh, economic drama, you know, in the middle of all that too. Yes, definitely. Uh, the post-election period was uh, both positive. Day after election, Trump up 1%, Biden up 2%. Two months after through inauguration, Trump was up 6.2. Biden was up 14.3. Now that's coming out of COVID. Well, it's actually happening there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really just kind of, um, you know, again, it's going back to the market having less uncertainty. It's now the market can, you know, think forward and, and, and sort of just react to what the expectations are going to be, you know, after the election result. So, Really what it comes down to is you, you've got to trust your, your planning process. Um, so when we think about financial planning, we're running all of our clients through a thousand different uh, bond stock and bond market performances. So out of a thousand, and these are being predicted in the future. This is not looking at historical. So we're trying to predict where asset classes are going into the future and we're running a thousand different models and coming up with them with the median, right? That's the highest probability of success. So we want everyone to have an 80 plus percent chance of not running out of money before age 95. Now, because the planning process is so conservative, that's fine because we've already baked into our, our models, a complete uh, revisit of the financial crisis where the market was down nearly 60% from peak to trough. Um, so that's built into our, our plan. So every plan has to pass that test in order before it can even get to the thousand different variations. Right. So once we know that, then we create a safety margin inside the portfolio. This is the money that's left over when you're age 95. And that could be, it, well, it's going to be very different for each family. But inside that safety margin is your financial crisis cushion. And so when bad things happen in the marketplace, we get concerned. We go back to those models, we reboot the engine, we run it again, and it doesn't really change much. No. And that's the part that people have to understand. You also carry a lot of cash as a retiree. Two years worth, exactly. 
of what your income income need is. Now, if it's coming from Social Security, you don't need to count that. If it if it's coming from a pension, you don't need to count that. But certainly, if you're pulling it from your portfolio, you should keep two years worth. And then if the market is down because something economically is happening, you have two years worth of withdrawal before you ever have to go into any of your investments. And then the good news is, man, that cash now is paying over 5%. So you're making 5% on the, yeah. <laughs> on the cash reserve now, 5.2 exactly. And then you're, you're also getting um, uh, dividends you from are. your investments. And then you're also um, going to have cash on your own right. for, for emergency reserves. So that, that's how you build this. You're not, you don't, to be a successful investor, you're not trying to time the markets and I just don't feel like this is good or this is markets at a high. I need to get out. That's all very short term, um, wealth killing, uh, thinking, right. That, that happens with that. So in the end, you, you have to have a good plan. It's no different than sports. If, if you tried to take a professional team and you went out there and said, all right, guys, let's go win, <laughs> you yeah. know, and then it started going bad and you start substituting players and mm -hmm. no, you, you have a game plan. Sometimes your game plan works. Sometimes it doesn't in sports. The good news is in finance, it's a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, um, you know, it, it's human nature. We, there's all kinds of books on, on like the psychology of money, but uh, in fact, that's a good book itself. There's just a title. But the, the, the concept here is, 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 uh, is our fight or flight nature is, it comes to work against us when we're building right. things. And also, too, if we, if we think about something long enough, we believe it to be true. That's another bias that we have as humans. So if we think long and long and hard, then we think, okay, that must be right. And I've used this example before, but I've had a family member ask me one time, you know, about chemtrails. <laughs> <laughs> right no um there are no such thing as chemtrails <laughs> uh delta airlines is not pumping chemtrails for the government into um into the atmosphere but people believe that there is a large group of people who yes. believe <laughs> that there's chemtrails because what's what else is coming out of the engine <laughs> well that's that's really cold air hitting a really hot engine and it's passing through it's getting sped up as it goes through the blades it comes out the backside and guess what? You create moisture, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, it's called science. That's how that happens. But people have thought about it who have, don't have the education and the knowledge and they think, oh no, they're definitely putting chemtrails out there. Everything has to be conspiracy theory <laughs> these <Yes>. days. <laughs> yes. It's just like the nine 11 conspiracy theorists people. Yes. It's like, I was on this website many years ago and I was like, you know what? I shouldn't be on this website. Cause you know, IP addresses are followed. <laughs> right. But, but their whole thing was like, nothing ever hit, it was a rocket that actually hit the um, Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah. So you watch the video, that's their proof. And all you see is like a nose of a plane. <laughs> right. I can identify a plane. And then all of a sudden the thing's blowing up. Okay. This is, this, if you're looking at it, this is the simplest example is that when you know something about cameras, which I know a little bit about, there's frame rates. And that was a super old security camera. And, you know, you see this, like when yeah. you rob the liquor store <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the guy's like, the guy's like walking, he's yeah. here. Then he's all of a sudden like five steps ahead, right. five more <laughs> steps ahead. And he, he's, he's like aiming the gun. And then, you know, it, it's just like all, well, that's what that camera was. It just had a really low refresh rate right. and you had a really fast moving airplane. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that, that, that's all that was, but that was our smoking gun. And you, and again, people with lack of education. So this is where financial planning really comes into play because Financial advisors like what we have here at Wiser, we have the education to be able to educate you. Now, unfortunately, most people just go, yeah, we trust you guys. And 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 that's as far as they want to go. But occasionally we have the engineers and the pilots say, I want to know more. And I love right. those meetings because I feel like we can really explain what we do mm -hmm. and why we do it this way. Uh, we had a pilot recently kind of take us to task over, over something. And I was like, oh, this is great. I think I've never been challenged this way before. So, <laughs> so let me show you the data behind right. all this. And yeah, we're very easy, easily able to, to, to show why this was the best strategy. But, um, but yeah, if you think about it long enough, you think that the president controls the stock market directly. And in some sense that they probably could, yeah. if they were just completely negligent, you know, there's probably ways that they would destroy a lot of wealth in the country yeah. potentially. Um, but I don't, I don't know that we could have 
a pre- we don't have really have dictators here, you know? No, I mean, it, and you know, every, you know, whether it's uh, more lenient tax policy with the Republican side or more stimulus pro-economic inflation act on the democratic side. I mean, I feel like each president has kind of, um, you know, different policies that do sort of help and support the markets in different ways. Um, and, you know, maybe some counterbalance that, um, or, you know, if uh, I guess a concern is Trump kind of getting in Jerome Powell's ear and sort of making the fed, you know, more kind of that may, political, that but, may be uneasy back then. As yeah. like, are you challenging the Fed directly? <laughs> this people don't yeah. do this. But the you know <laughs> the Fed's been pretty uh, you know, and Jerome Powell's been there for Trump and Biden now. So uh, it, they like to remain um, you know neutral, and, and, and that's their goal is just to combat inflation. Um, right. But but yeah, you know, there I feel like no matter who's in office, there, there are you know different policies that can hurt and help the market. But we but we have a free market. Mm-hmm. We, capitalism is in the U.S. is a free market, and so as long as capitalism can do what it needs to do, right? You know, they'll. If you put a soda tax and you taxed soda to the point where no one was buying it and Coke was suffering, mm-hmm. then so does the Coke's going to innovate a different product to make money right. with. I mean, that, that's the beautiful thing about the free market system, is that people are going to find ways to make money. Yeah, they can, even if uh, they have to go sell soda everywhere else but the U.S., they still make a ton mm-hmm. of money because there's more people who don't live here than the people that live here, right? right? <laughs> so there's always there's always ways to to make a dollar, uh, and then we have really smart people in this country that figure that out. Yeah, and, and you know, for instance, too, another point would be like a lot of these big companies like Coke, they're multinational companies. They have a, a chunk of their revenue coming. Uh, from overseas. So, I mean, if there's some restrictive policies that are passed here in the United States, they could maybe focus more on their international markets. You know, I think the SP 500, I think uh, it's about 40% of its revenue is coming from international markets. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd say higher than that actually, but it might be a little bit higher. But yeah. Um, so th- the bottom line is you can create a lot of anxiety in your own head over all this. And I would encourage all of our listeners as we go through this political season to understand that, you know, as a, a famous uh, quote here is, is, you know, the markets in the short term are a voting machine. They're going to move with emotion. Uh, but in the long term, it's a weighing machine, right? right? William Bernstein said that. So in the long term, it's a weighing machine. So only the companies that make money survive. That's where it really comes down yeah. to. And that's the beautiful thing about investing. When you invest in long-term healthy asset classes like the S&P 500, it's you, you've, you've eliminated that specific company risk. Right. And now you can focus on, you know, these charts that we have up on our, um, up in this podcast, uh, uh, post, all these charts are moving up very aggressively from the left to the right with some nastiness in the middle. There's no doubt about that. We went through some stuff over the last 20, 30 years in this country, but the markets all bounce back. You know why? Cause all these companies made money. That's right. what it comes down to. Every one of these companies making money. If they're not making money, they go out of business. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's an index, and the index is efficient because you know it's the five hundred largest companies. Um, so it in order to get in there, they have to have made money, right? And then they'll kick out the ones that aren't making money, right? It's a self healing index, <laughs> right? It, you know, it, it's people say, oh, the S and P don't invest in that because it's only the top seven companies that are carrying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's based on market cap. Those are the winning companies. Right. They have, we talked about this before. Um, I don't know if it's on the podcast or maybe it's one of our meetings, but uh, those top seven companies have more cash on hand. What, what did we determine uh, Apple had in our conversation? Wasn't it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Was uh, it 400? Was it 400? Uh, it was in the billions, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, they have. Is it 40 billion? It, I mean, it was yeah. a lot of money. 140 billion, I think is what it was. It, it was a lot of a lot of cash. You think about that. You, know, you, have, an, you have billions of dollars in disposable cash in your company, you can create whole new verticals. 73 billion. 73 billion. Yeah. Cap- Apple right now is sitting on $73 billion in cash. And, I mean, and if they wanted to create yeah. a car company, they literally have the money, <laughs> the money to do that. Now they've, they've uh, axed that uh, concept. Yes. But yep. what else are they developing that they would continue to be the largest market share in the country? Yeah, I, I mean, I know that they're, and they've got they've received some criticism for not um, jumping in on the 
artificial intelligence space, but I, I think it was like maybe a couple of weeks ago, they did announce that they're looking into making their own um, chips um, for artif- artificial intelligence oh. products uh, down the road. So I think their stock has been performing well lately, but you know, they're, um, you know, say what you want about Apple. They're always very cautious and prudent with how they use their cash and, and make investments. So they're not going to just um, jump into an area just because that's the hot theme right now. Right. Right. But the point is, is that they have the ability to do yes. it. Yeah. They're able to uh, be <laughs> nimble and navigate. Right. Um, the, even the other six companies that are top in the S and P right now, I, I wouldn't say that uh, any of them are fly by night or have the capable of going business out of business tomorrow. Right. No. Um, they, and they all have a tremendous amount of cash. So the bottom, mm-hmm. the bottom line here is um, don't, don't create your own anxiety about all this. Uh, in the end, we all want our sports teams to win. We all want our political candidates that we choose to win. But in the end, what I want to win is the free market system and the ability right. to create companies. And right now, this is the only place in the world that you can go and create companies uh, and and live out this American dream. Exactly. So. All right. Thank you. Good luck uh, at your conference uh, <laughs> next week. And two, we, yeah, I guess it's two weeks. Two weeks yeah, from now, two weeks. All right, mm-hmm. and we will. Um, oh, we're sending Robert with you, so he said he would do a live feed. <laughs> he'll keep me in line. He'll keep me in line. <laughs> yeah, he'll keep you in line. Well, 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 we'll see if we can get a live feed. I told him yeah. we'd either uh, uh, get, get the video back, we'll either um, we'll embarrass you or we'll celebrate you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for listening to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss any new episodes. We'd also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out. This episode was produced by Rachel Dotson. This podcast is strictly for informational purposes only and is not to be considered as investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any financial products, securities, digital assets, or any other investment vehicles or a basis to make any financial decisions. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investor advisor with the SEC. The host and or guests may personally own securities, digital assets, or other investment vehicles mentioned on this podcast. Neither the host nor guests of the show are compensated for their participation and no referral fees are paid to or received by any host or guest for clients, listeners, or similar interests. Investments involve risk, and unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor, tax professional, insurance professional, and or legal professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.